Hello winemakers, this is Frank from Musto Wine Grape in Hartford, Connecticut. And we carry a lot of grapes in the fall especially, um, an, an overwhelming number. I mean, if you want a cab, we've got a lot of different cabs, not just cab, but we have so many grapes that come in from different regions on the West Coast. Uh, obviously we do Chilean, we do South African, we do uh, the New York area grapes. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what grapes go together and um, why do you do that? Why do we blend? So let's look at the two. We have a single varietal. When you talk about single varietal, it's got a more focused flavor. In other words, if you're making a Barbera, um, if you make a lot of wine or drink a lot of wine, you'll know what a Barbera tastes like. So it's, it's, a, it's a varietal characteristics that you, when you're a sommelier, you really need to know not only what those grapes are, but where they come from, what year. It's amazing what they have to go through to be trained. So it's made from just one grape when it's a single varietal. And most of the countries, 75% of it has to be that one grape to be called that. So it could be called Cabernet, but 75% of it has to be called Cab, and they could put something else in behind it to, to finish that 100% off, but it's still considered a Cab. When we do blending, we make a more complex, unique, and balanced wine. I use the word balanced because sometimes you blend to fix a wine, which we'll talk about. Um, I am a big blending guy. I will make five reds in the fall. I'll pick them out ahead of time, decide what blends I'd like to go after. It doesn't mean they're gonna work, which we'll, I'm gonna mention to you in a bit, but um, I'll make those big reds that I want and I'll decide what blend I want and I'll make those grapes. I treat them and ferment them separately I age them separately, and then I blend later on. So why would we want to blend two grapes, three grapes, four grapes? I think the most I've ever blended was five, which was a little tricky. Uh, but you take a look. Whenever you buy a blended wine at, at the store, you'll see 1% of this, 2% of that. You're like, are you kidding? But remember something. When you're talking 1,000 gallons of wine, that's a significant amount. But when you break it down to percentages, it's, it seems low. But... I like to do it because I do create a more complex wine. Um, and it's also, it gives it a flavorful wine profile. It's meaning that you're bringing in some Cabernet, you're bringing in some Merlot, you're bringing in some Barbera. So it becomes very complex. And normally when someone drinks a blend, they have trouble telling what grapes are in it, but they know that it's a delicious wine to drink. You could also use it to enhance aroma, texture, finish, and color of a wine. So if you have a wine that's a little weak, and I, again, I'm leaning back toward the Barbera. If you need a little bit of aroma in there, Barbera has a big fruity nose on it. So that's something you could blend into a wine to pick it up. If you're looking for a little bit of color, you have a, a lighter wine that you want to darken up a little bit. Um, you could put some Petit Syrah, some Elegante in it. So it's used to kind of, and I kind of say it here, to fix or adjust the wine. Um, let me tell you this. Don't ever try to take a bad wine and try to fix it with good wine because... Nine out of 10 is the bad wine wins and just sucks everything down. So if you have a wine that just isn't really drinkable and you're trying to fix it by adding in good wine, you're making a mistake. So be real careful, bench test it, let it sit a little bit in a bottle and then try it. But be careful not to throw good wine after bad wine. So here's what I do when I do my blending. I determine the blends desired for next season and I plan my grapes ahead. And I also, besides this, determining what grapes I want to make, I just say what yeast I want to use with each of those grapes. I tend to use different yeast with different grapes also. Um, yeast, it, it's, there's so many out there, you could have so many combinations. I tend to like to try different things so I could learn to teach other people. But when you find that one grape and that one yeast that go together for you, stick with it. Make that good wine every year. Um, here's my warning to you. Blending wines does not always work. So I've, I've had plans to blend certain grapes together. And when I started to do that, even with a bench test at different levels, it just wasn't what I wanted. So they, blends don't always work. Thus, for those of you that take grapes home and put in 10 cases of Cab, three cases of Merlot, and two of a Petit Syrah, game's over. You get what you get. It's already in the grape and it, it's, it's fermenting together. You're better off fermenting each one separately and then blending later on. But I'm just saying to you, a lot of times the blends don't always work. What do I mean? 
Petite Syrah is a great blender, but if you put too much in, like instead of 10%, if you put 15 or 20 into a blend, it could become overly tannic. Um, it could overwhelm the wine and throw it out of balance. So be careful with your blends. It's not a mathematical decision to make. You need to bench test it. So some of the good grapes that I like to use, as I call them fixers, is as I said before, Petite Syrah is a wonderful grape on its own, but it can really help give a wine a lot of body and color and tannins. Um, normally what I do when I blend my five, I'll make a blend of this, I'll make a blend of that, maybe a third blend. It depends how it works out, but whatever's left over, I work on that and I bottle it straight. So if you get a bottle of my Petit Syrah out of my bottle room, it's probably left over because I just don't go after straight Petit Syrah. I always blend it in and whatever's left over, I bottle it and I'm proud of it. It comes out well. Aleganti is a cheaper grape you can use. It's basically just for color. Um, it will give us some flavor, but it's a big dark. So these are the two dark guys you'd like to have. Um, I also like to have Barbera on hand uh, because it's a very fruity, bright, crisp wine. And that could help pick up a wine that's a little flat and needs some fruit and some aroma on it. And then for those of you that don't know, there's a white wine from the Finger Lakes called Niagara. And it is just so floral. Um, it, is, it is a wonderful wine to, to splash in, I call it, into a white wine that's lacking nose and taste. And it, it, it is just a very fruity floral wine. Uh, it's, it's easy to work with. Um, give it a try one time. The problem is you can't buy these you can only buy these normally in local areas at the store, like it's a big finger lake if you go there. But if you try to buy it in other places in a liquor store, it might be hard to find. But try to get your hands on some, give it a try, you'll fall in love with it. They call it very foxy, it's got a big nose on it. So this is a comment I got out of a book that I thought was very interesting. It says, the art of blending is taking individual pieces and making the sum of what you're blending better than the individual pieces you started with. It, you're, when you blend, you're trying to take the best of everything and put it together. It doesn't always work, but it will work most of the time. And I, I do a lot of blends, and I put my blends on the label of my bottle with the percentages, because I, I would like people to know what's in, in that particular blend. So these are the steps we go through. Um, we talk about bench testing, which we've done in other videos. We bench test with several good wine tasters, all right? So... Um, I'll sit with my wife if it's something I have a couple of friends over and we you get a joint decision um, Someone's got to make the final decision. That's the winemaker, which would be me in my house But if I'm working up at a winery, I'll give my input It's up to the owner of the winery to decide what blend he's happy with and I work with him to achieve that so I usually just do hundred milliliter samples so we take a hundred milliliter glass that has markings on it and I end up, um, if let's say I'm gonna do a 70-30 blend, Cab Merlot, I'll put in 70% Cab, 30% Merlot, put it in a glass, stir it, and then taste it and see if I like it. But there's other ways to do that bench testing, but that's just an example. So 100 mils are fine. Then once you're happy with the blend that you've decided upon, make a 375 or a 750 bottle and leave it for about a week and just let those two grapes or wines kind of gel together, you know, give it a shake every couple of days, just let it kind of, you know, settle out and then give it a taste. And if you're satisfied, then you blend your tanks together. So if I decide to blend these two tanks or these tanks, I would do my final blend at that point once I've tasted it again. So we bench test it, we make a bottle and then we do the final blend and we, edit, we do the same thing at a, at a winery too. Um, I say remember to ferment your wine separately and then blend, blend later on as they go. Because again, you put them in as grapes, show's over, you get what you get. And it might not, it might, you might have too much tannins in there, too much acidity. Uh, be careful when you do that. I highly recommend you blend your wines, uh, ferment your wines separately and blend later on. So I listed a few blends for those of you that are interested in, uh, and some of these are big name blends and others I've, I've kind of researched. So some of the white blends, you've heard of a white Bordeaux. A white Bordeaux is made of Sauvignon Blanc, Cimillon, and Muscadel, which is a very floral wine. A white Rhone has Marsan, Rosan, Grenache Blanc, and Viognier. 
Um, a night, uh, these, I, I, I kind of picked these out for you. This is a Chardonnay blend, a Riesling blend, and a Sauvignon Blanc blend. So Chardonnay can be blended with either Viognier, Pinot Gris, or Pinot Blanc. Those are the common blends for Chardonnay. Riesling can go with Gewinstraminer or Rosan. Those are the two. And Sauvignon Blanc is normally blended with Cimolon, and that's it. So if you, want to, if you have any of these grapes, try getting your hands on these grapes and doing a little blend with those. Reds, red's a little bit more complex. So I kind of, you know, a lot of people say I want to make a Bordeaux blend or a super Tuscan blend. So I wanted you to know what's in those. And they're different percentages, obviously. But the red Bordeaux have Cab, Merlot, Cab Franc, Melbeck, and Petit Verdot. Those are the, the main grapes that are put into a red Bordeaux at different percentages. Super Tuscan, which is the Italian, is mostly Sangiovese, some Syrah some Cab, some Merlot, and some Cab Franc. So notice we've got some duplicates going here, but that's fine. But this is Sangiovese. A Roja wine is Tempranillo, and they call it Grenache, uh, Grenache or Grenache. Uh, Tempranillo is a very nice grape, uh, very prominent in Spain. It makes a nice blending wine. I've actually blended, I think it was Tempranillo and Barbera one time, and it was really nice. Uh, a Rhone blend is made up of Grenache, Syrah, Mauvedre, and Sinsalt. So Grenache, Syrah, Mauvedre uh, is a very, very common trio that you'll get. That you actually can buy wine kits. They're labeled a GSM, which stands for Grenache, Syrah, Mauvedre. Chianti, there's no such thing as a Chianti grape. It's made of 90% Sangiovese, and there's some Tribbiano in there or another grape, but it's mostly Sangiovese when you see Chianti. So you're not going to come in and buy a Chianti grape. You can buy Chianti wine, but this is what's in it. And then in Washington State, they've come up with something called a CMS blend, which is Cab Syrah Merlot. Not a, you know, nothing very unusual, but that's becoming popular up there. Um, one of the favorites, if you want to make a really nice homemade wine, is Zinfandel and Petit Syrah or Primitivo and Petit Syrah. Zinfandel and Primitivo are not the same grape, but they're very, very close to each other. So either of these, this year I made a Primitivo Petit Syrah, which came out really nice. The Primitivo gave me a lot of fruit and aromatics, and the Petit gave me some uh, body, some color, some structure to it, and tannin. So very nice blend. I was happy with that this year. Um, Carmen Air, something that is... Uh, a, a, South American grape, you could blend that with a little bit of Petit Verdot. Petit Verdot is like a Petit Syrah, gives you a lot of color, um, not the same as a Petit Syrah, so don't let that name fool you. But this is something that is a blending wine. Very rarely do you get this straight up. You can't buy a Petit Verdot straight up at the store. But when you look at the blends in a wine, it's usually less than 5%. So it's added at very small amounts. And then I mentioned it up above, that GMS blend, um, try making that one time. It's very interesting. It's a Grenache, Chiram, Mauvedre, very nice grapes. And then finally, uh, Pinot Noir is normally straight, but if you want to blend the Pinot Noir, and of course you'd bench test it first, you could try it with a little bit of Syrah, which they say gives a little bit of color and body, or you could blend it with a Gamay, which is a lighter wine. So Pinot Noir and Gamays are somewhat similar on body taste and so forth, but don't be afraid to try to blend. I made some Pinot Noir this year uh, from Russian River. I'm leaving it straight. It came out really nice. I made 25 gallons of it from the store. Um, wonderful wine, uh, kind of nailed it. It tastes exactly how it should. So that, so again, sometimes you leave your wine straight, but um, try blending and making some very complex wines. And, and it's fun to do that too. So I wanted to go over this with you a little bit, just a shorty, just to kind of say, hey, these are the grapes that can go together. We could offer this to you at any time, let us know. But until then, go make some good blended wine.